Before Lister entered stasis, he placed his pregnant cat Frankenstein in the hold of the ship. Because of this, the radiation leak that killed the entire crew of Red Dwarf did not affect her or her children, or her children's children. Over the course of three million years, the progeny of Frankenstein evolved into a humanoid race. A religion developed around the Holy Mother Frankenstein and her creator, Cloister the Stupid. A holy war broke out over which color hats Lister's Food Shack employees would wear. Eventually, both factions left on space arcs, leaving behind only the aged, crippled, and infirm. When Lister is released from stasis, only one cat remains. Called simply Cat, or The Cat, this last member of his race is essentially human, but he does display many cat-like qualities. His movements are quick and graceful, and he has the highest reflexes among any on the ship, including, apparently, Crichton? I recommend the cat pilots with his superior reflexes and nasal intuition that will give us our best chance. For this reason, his first high stat is agility. That's the first reason he's selected as the standing pilot of Starbug whenever possible. The second reason is that his senses are so sharp that his cat-like vision and highly attuned faculties of smell allow him to detect him danger from any direction, even somehow across the vast distances of outer space. Something's coming. Nothing on the Navicom. I can smell it. Something big. I'm getting nothing either. These nostrils never lie. It's for this reason that perception is his second high stat. Here are his initial special stats. His intelligence has always been quite low, so that's reflected. And though his physical endurance is probably standard, he seems to break down at the damage of his clothing. With high agility and perception, he'd be drawn to small guns. In the episode Gunman of the Apocalypse, he plays as the Riviera Kid, a gunslinger so quick he can shoot bullets out of the air. He also fights like a cat, using Sneak to attempt to get the drop on the Polymorph. His low intelligence gets the best of him in this situation, however, but it does speak to how we might play him. The cat, like all cats, has a short attention span and little object memory. He often even displays ambivalence toward his friends. I don't care! You're the one who's doing the dying, not me! You'd sacrifice your life for the good of the crew? No, I'd sacrifice your life for the good of the crew! <laughs> Don't you care about anyone but yourself? Hell no! I don't even care about you! The idea of Cat going out into the Capital Wasteland solving people's problems is ridiculous. He wouldn't even go so far as to respect private property, as shown here. See this hand? It is mine. See these things? They are mine! I'll give you a fish. One fish? <laughs> Two fish! For all these shiny things? I'll show you how to get all the fish you'll ever need. My fish? Mm. This also shows his tendency to barter for items. He makes people pay dearly for things he claims as his own, even stolen things. Six fish. Oh! <laughs> as far as equipment goes, our first priority is to find a suit. Any suit will do for now, but the cat would not allow himself to be seen without one. Now the grimy, dirty suits of the wasteland are pretty paltry fare for the cat, so we'll need to acquire the only fancy suit in the game the one being worn by Eulogy Jones. There's also a matching hat in Eulogy's pad if you're so inclined. Fallout 3 has some pretty slim pickings for items that suit characters, but among all the small guns in the game, my favorite for this build is Wild Bill's Sidearm, found in the Steel Yard of the Pit DLC. It has pretty low damage, but it can be fired three times a second and is very common ammunition. If this doesn't suit you, Paulson's revolver is a heavier, unscoped gun for the Riviera Kid. Now you should probably nuke Megaton in order to get the fancier digs at Tenpenny Tower, and be sure to fill your wardrobe with all the suits you can find. All of the specifics of this build, including perks and items, are listed in the description. I hope you enjoy playing as the last remaining Phila Sapien. Check back next week when I sort of make a build for Arnold Rimmer. Thanks for watching.